Hello and welcome to the second part of this AE Basics motion tracking tutorial. So we've set up our workflow and we're ready to actually do the track. If you want to know how to set it up, see the previous tutorial. What we are actually tracking, if I just click in my layer panel and zoom in a bit, we're tracking this shaving cut on this man's face and we have the options to track down here and you'll see that we can analyze backwards one frame or analyze backwards we can analyze forwards one frame or analyze forwards and I'm going to actually analyze backwards to start off with so this is where my current time indicator is so my current time indicator will go backwards as it analyzes backwards so I'm going to click analyze backwards and do the actual tracking and you can see that's going pretty well keep an eye on it and that's jumped around so as soon as it starts to jump around like that what you need to do is you need to go in and find not the beginning but the last good track so I'm going to go back until we have got a good track which is just there and as you can see that is a good track so what we tend to do is we can either just analyze backwards one frame at a time and see if we're going to get good results if we go backwards a little bit so I'm just going to carry on analyzing backwards just a bit and you can see we're actually writing over the areas that had problems which is good and from that point onwards I think I can continue to analyze backwards and it will write over these points so I'm just going to zoom out a little again and I'm going to analyze backwards the idea being if you have a problem do not go back to the beginning because if you've already got good data why lose it so we've got good data and go all the way forwards if I want I can zoom right in and I can get a feel for how it's moving step by step and that's doing a pretty good job that's following that point brilliantly we've got over the problem that we had simply by just going backwards and analyzing one frame at a time as opposed to analyzing multiple frames and then what we do is we go back to the last good point which is there and now we can analyze forwards now I know I've got a potential problem coming up this is actually why I chose this shot because he's gonna move very quickly and if you remember we have to have quite a large search region here to take that into account so now I'm going to analyze forward and I'm just going to go one frame at a time and let's see how we do so this is analyze forward one frame one frame one frame and we're just about following and by doing it one frame at a time we are trying to deal with this very fast motion and as you can see the camera is blurring you can see that the overall fidelity of the shot is pretty low because the movement is so fast but we're just still being able to get some kind of a track as we go forwards one frame at a time let's see if we keep hold of it I can't even see if that's on to be honest because it's so blurred let's just assume it's okay I don't think that's on I think we've lost it I think we actually should be over here at this point now if you've got this issue and we can't really see it clearly but we can make a good assumption make sure you've got those four black arrows and actually put it where you believe it should be and then you can go forward or you can go backwards a frame and just see if you're in the right place oh it didn't like that okay now I can see it should be here at that point so I'm gonna move it to here and what we're actually doing is we're making an assumption I'm just gonna go forwards this time by using the current time indicator just that one frame or the page down button now we're in the next frame and now I'm gonna analyze forward again another frame and I can see that actually the problem's here it's not tracked it because of the quality of the footage but we can track it manually and again I can go forward one frame and that time I'm just going to move my item across seems to have roughly followed it keep going again I'm not sure is, it, is that it up there I think that might be so in fact I might want to move to there and let's carry on going forward one frame at a time seeing if we can stick over the problem that's definitely in the wrong place so you can see that there are times when you simply can't follow it the footage won't allow you but what you can then do is go backwards or forwards one frame at a time and just help the tracker get it right because at some point this gentleman's going to slow down we're getting there just about now and we can see that actually we are pretty much over the actual point so what we can try doing at this point now that the fast movement stopped is we can try analyzing forward and seeing how we do and actually we're getting a pretty good track at that point there we go so now we have actually gone through all of the footage part of it of which we had to help just by going one step at a time through 
but by doing that we've actually ended up with a really good track using the, the track forward feature and the track forward or analyze forward one frame at a time. Now it's important to say that at this point you have not finished. It's very tempting to want to whip into the composition window and carry on from this point but it's very important at this point that you click this apply button. It will then ask you a stupid question. Do you want to apply X and Y? Yes, you do want to apply it. Of course you do. You could do X only and Y only, but why would you? So we just click OK. It applies it to, I'm just going to move this up, to the null object as well as to the layer itself. So if I open up the null object, just select the null object and hit U, you can see the keyframes for position, as well as we've got our tracker point in the original layer here. So we've got the, the null object which is now going to follow the man and you can see it's gone back to the composition window. So if I pull that right down and I'm going to zoom in on the man a bit and you can see that the anchor point of the null object which is always the top left hand corner is now going to follow the man wherever he goes or follow that spot wherever it goes. Now what we could do of course is we could add a patch although that's not as good as the paint option that we did in the previous tutorial but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a piece of text so I'm going to select the text tool click in here and type ouch bit big so I'm going to double click it and I'm going to just pull down the size of that text and actually I'm going to change this the, uh, the stroke down to just one pixel I think as well so there we have ouch make it even smaller if we want to and now I'm going to put it where I want it to go because this is going to be a child so I'm going to put it just over the spot like that just between the O and the U I'm going to turn off the null object because I don't even need to see that and now I've got ouch just over here and if I wanted to of course I could add an arrow or all the other bits and pieces I want now at this point this is at the right place for the spot at this point in my timeline so all I need to do now is take the parent control for the text and say who are you going to follow you are going to follow the null let go click away and now when I hit the space bar you'll see that ouch is tracking the spot let's see how it does with the fast bit well it's pretty much on the spot we might have moved our track point slightly to actually get that result let me just pull it out to see I think what's actually happened is when we did the fast movement we didn't keep directly on top of the spot but it's still tracking it pretty closely. So you can see that's how you do motion tracking in After Effects. It's a fairly straightforward process, but do bear in mind that if you're going to do multiple tracks from the same piece of footage, say we were going to track this lady's ear or something else entirely different the side of his glasses, then you would need a new null for each of the tracking points that you have because you're going to be parenting different things to each of those null objects. Well, I hope you found these tutorials useful and that you'll be able to use the motion tracking feature. It's great fun and it does give a very good and organic result. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.